hello everyone so now we are going to do the part two if you remember just now we finished the small company network part one now we are going to do the part two so in the part two what we will do i will put this port if you see vlan 10 this all devices are in the vlan 10 so let me put this all in the vlan 10 how i can put let me show you i will take this uh, axis layer switch and i am going to put that all ports in the vlan 10 after that we are going to do the configuration for the switch 2 okay so let me go here i will uh, write here what i can say i can go in the global configuration mode interface range and i need to select the range here okay uh, f0 by 1 is connected here so i can do that one as a trunk already it become trunk because one side when we make trunk automatically other side is going to become as a trunk but anyhow cisco recommend to do manually so better we will do manual also so no issue we will do that one also okay so let me do first of all that one only fast ethernet 0 by 1 switch port mode trunk so with this command what i done i make this interface as a trunk this one fast ethernet 0 by 1 now i have the remaining interface if you see i have f0 by 2 f0 by 3 f0 by 4 f0 by 5 i have this interface so i can say here interface range okay let me exit this one and then write interface range f0 by 2 dash 5 okay we can check here whatever interface i have this is a fast ethernet 0 by 3 0 by 2 0 by 4 0 by 5 okay so we can take this multiple interface same time and i need to put this all in the which vlan first of all i will say switch port mode axis so i will make this as a axis then i will make switch port axis vlan 10 because this is vlan 10 right let me check this is a sales so vlan 10 so i will say vlan 10 so all this device move to vlan 10 now i will save the configuration okay i hope you understand this one what i done i select the multiple interface i told that put this interface in the vlan 10 that's all let me do the same thing in the switch 2 so this is a switch 2 first i will make this fast ethernet 0 by 1 as a trunk so i will go in the global configuration mode i will write interface fast ethernet 0 by 1 i will write switch port mode trunk okay i done this one after that interface range range fast ethernet 0 by 2 dash 5 or if you want you can check also let me show you this is a fast ethernet 0 by 3 0 by 4 2 0 by 4 0 by 5 okay so same thing from 0 by 2 to 0 by 5 we need to put this one as a switch port axis uh, switch port mode axis okay switch port mode axis and then i will write switch port axis vlan 20 okay which vlan vlan 20 because vlan 20 is for marketing that's all and i will write wr wr to save the configuration after that if you go for this machine and put here as a dscp you will get the ip if we configure the dscp correctly in our layer 3 switch we should get the ip but still it is not working we need to do troubleshooting sometime we will have issue also we need to do troubleshooting also still we are not getting okay so we need to look and i will do this fast forwarding because if anything taking long time so we can do the fast forwarding after that we can try so let me try now i will go here i will uh, select here now i get correctly okay i am getting correct ip 192.168.20.4 this machine received 20.4 let me check here what we are getting this is our printer so look this device we have here 20.4 this device i think yeah 20.2 okay let me check this device 20.3 okay so all our machines are getting ip here let me check for this vlan we get 10.3 from the dscp we are getting this ip and here still i did not get ip let me go and check do i selected i did not selected that's why i did not get ip let me select the dscp now so i get this ip also from the dscp and here i did not get because we did not select here as a dscp so let me select here also dscp so i get ip so till here our network is good if you want to communicate from vlan 10 to vlan 20 it will work okay if you see this ip 10.4 so let me try to ping from here to 10.4 so i will write here ping 192.168.10.4 okay i am pinging from the pc4 pc4 is in the different vlan pc4 is in the vlan uh, which vlan vlan 20 this one vlan 20 i am pinging the pc 
uh, which is in the VLAN 10. Okay, if you see here, let me explain again. I am sending the uh, request. I am sending the packet from the PC4 to PC1. PC1 is in the VLAN 10 and they are having the IP address 10.4. And my computer IP address is 20. Dot something. Okay, if you want to check, you can check here 20. Dot 1. 20 dot 1 is my IP and I am pinging 10 dot something 10 dot 4 how it is working different two different VLAN with different subnet because we done inter VLAN here that's why it is working perfectly okay so this one is working so our LAN network is okay no issue now we need to look this one how we can communicate with the servers okay how we can access the internet we need to look so what I will do I will go here again our layer 3 switch and in uh, in this one we need to configure what we need to configure we already assigned the IP if you see show IP interface brief so we already have this IP here but this interface is done because here we did not make this interface up okay so later we will do that up no issue now what I will do I will do the OSPF configuration okay in the layer 3 switch I will do the OSPF configuration because I need to send all VLAN traffic to this gateway that's why I need to do the OSPF or any routing protocol or I need to create the DIY, static route so better do the dynamic route so what I will do I will do the OSPF here how we can do I will write like this I will go global configuration mode after that I will write router OSPF 1 okay router OSPF 1 I need to enable OSPF under this interface so I will write G what is our G1 slash 0 slash 1 okay G1 slash 0 slash 1 why I am not getting something wrong here I did not write interface so I will write here interface okay interface g1 slash 0 slash 1 then I write IP OSPF 1 area 0 okay same thing as we do before so I enable the OSPF under that interface so this interface is having the OSPF now I need to enable the OSPF in all the VLAN because I need to send the traffic all the VLAN traffic so I will write VLAN 10 I will enable IP OSPF 1 area 0 okay and then I write interface VLAN 20 and then I write IP OSPF 1 area 0 so I enable here also so I done in the VLAN 10 VLAN 20 we done and also we enable in this interface that's all so I hope this configuration is enough for this uh, switch but anyhow I will save the configuration then we will go for the gateway router and then we will do configuration if we face any issue then we will come back again to uh, this layer 3 switch so this is a brand new router nothing is configured here so what I will do I will write here no and then I will change the configuration I will write the host name uh, we can give whatever host name you want we can give the core router or exit router whatever you want or gateway router whatever name you want you can give so I will write GW the, that means this is a gateway router and I am going to assign the IP here fast ethernet 0 by 0 I will give the IP interface fast ethernet 0 by 0 and what IP we should give IP address whatever we plan here 192 192 1.2 okay 1.2 give space 255.255.255.0 and we write no shirt here okay I make this interface up so what I done first I assign the IP let me assign the IP to other interface which interface this interface which is connecting to the ISP so I will write interface fast ethernet 0 by 1 okay and then I will write here what I can say I know shared this one and also I will write IP address 200.1.1.1 okay and give space 255.255.255.0 already we write no shirt let me check do show IP interface brief if you see we have the interface we assign the IP this one okay this is the 192.168.1.2 this is the 200.1.1.1 so everything is good now I can enable the OSPF in this interface fast ethernet 0 by 1 okay if I enable interface OSPF here that will be good and also we need to create the default route we need to send all the traffic if you see here whatever traffic I am receiving to the gateway router I need to forward that all traffic to the ISP because I am not maintaining the BGP table in this okay I am not maintaining the BGP table this is my gateway router I don't want to have the complete internet table so I will create the default route I will forward all the traffic to the ISP because ISP is having the complete internet table so they will take care about that one so simple what I will write I will write here IP route okay 
IP root 0.0.0 and then I will say 0.0.0, .0 means any IP with any subnet mask forward here 200.1.1.2 200.1.1.2 so what I am saying with any IP address with any subnet mask forward that all traffic to this IP this one next hop so what I done I created the default route here I sent all our traffic to the ISP now we will do the OSPF so I will write router OSPF 1 okay and I need to enable OSPF here we should not enable OSPF here because this site is the ISP only we create the default route that's all we will not do OSPF here we need to do OSPF only here let me write here we need to do the OSPF only here we should not do OSPF here here only default route that's all finish so now I will enable the OSPF here so let me go here I will write router OSPF 1 then we can write interface fast ethernet 0 by 0 this is fast ethernet 0 by 0 this one and then IP OSPF OSPF 1 area 0 I am using area 0 as a uh, area you can take whatever area because we are having only small network I am using only 0 area 0 ok so I done this one I enable if you see we have the urgency and now we will have all the routes if you want to check we can check after some time do show IP route we will get the VLAN network also if you see this is our uh, VLAN network ok 10.0 20.0 I am learning this one from the VLAN if you want I will write do show IP route ok IP route OSPF so these two routes we are learning from the VLAN if you remember VLAN 10 and 20 we are getting the route here ok and also one more thing we created default route here if you want to send the default route from the OSPF we can also write default information originate let me write here let me show you that what I am saying if I write router OSPF OSPF 1 and then I write default information originate ok so they will send the default route whatever default route we have if we have default route here they are going to send there but anyhow I already created here default route so no need to worry but in real scenario we will write this one so all others which will get the default route also ok so what we done here we enable the OSPF we are receiving the route here now we need to configure the NAT so our internal PC can access the devices if you go here and if you want to access example you want to access the internet you can say 8.8.8.8 .8 .8 it will not work because still we did not configure NAT here still we did not configure NAT here this is a 8.8.8 .8 .8 server we are unable to access because still we don't have the NAT configuration if you see here what we can say in this one our traffic our traffic will move ok our traffic from here it will go like this ok let me show you let me move this up it will go like this it will come here this is a private IP ok this is a public IP so you uh, your IP need to translate from private to public if it is not translating it will not go because ISP will block the private IP ISP will block the private IP they will configure the ACL which block the private IP so we should not send the private IP because we are using the internet if you are using the what we can say lease line or public network uh, private line we can use our private IP to connect the two branches but now I am not connecting the two branches what we are doing we are sending all our traffic to the ISP so for that purpose we need to configure NAT network address translation we take the NAT to translate the private IP to public IP public IP to private IP so we need to use here NAT that is PAT only NAT overload we are saying so they are going to change the port number and they will send the traffic ok so we need to configure PAT we are saying port address translation NAT PAT both are same only but here one to one we will do but here what we will do PAT means we, uh, at last in the command we will write overload so when we write the overload so they are going to change the port number and they are going to send so with the one public IP we can send lot of traffic if we configure the NAT static NAT one to one they will map so for that purpose I will not use the static NAT I am going to use the PAD that is generally we are calling NAT only but that is actually PAD so we need to configure the PAD now so how we are going to configure PAD first of all we need to select the traffic ok first of all we need to select the traffic then add the traffic in the NAT and apply the NAT in the interface here and here we need to apply so what I will do and also if you check here <coughs> in this machine you are unable to access ok 
you are unable to access the 8.8.8 .8. but if you ping this IP you will able to access this one let me show you if you ping this IP 192.168.1.2 okay you, your traffic from your machine from your machine you are uh, going till gateway router okay after that it is not working you are unable to access so we need to configure NAT when you configure the NAT then only you, uh, you, you are able to access the internet okay so we are going to do the NAT now so let me show you how we can configure NAT here okay in this one we need to configure the NAT but the video is becoming lengthy so this is a small company network configuration part 2 now the NAT configuration and the complete testing we are going to do in our next class that is a small company network part 3 okay thank you